Oh, hello there, my fellow American. It's that time of year again where the Super Bowl of Europe is about to go down. Yes, the Champions League final. The tournament where all the best leagues from across Europe send their top teams to compete in an anime tournament arc to see who is truly the top dogs of the EU. Plus Brexit. So why not indulge in the biggest sports spectacle that Europe has to offer? Well, that is until the Euros, which is basically the World Cup, but only for the colonizers. But that shit doesn't start till mid-June, and the Champions League Finals on June 1st, so why not kick off your summer full of sports goodness, remember we got the Olympics, with a sumptuous appetizer. And we have a spicy matchup this year. The fair tale underdogs of fan-owned Borussia Dortmund, who returned to the final for the first time in 11 years, versus the main shonen protagonist of this competition, Real madrid Kun whose plot armor is thicker than Naruto's and is destined to become Hokage for the 15th time if they win this one. So as per usual, let me be your guide. Break down the two contenders, how they got here, the major players, all the juicy storylines going to the final, and then at the very end tell you that Real Madrid is going to win. Welcome to a Clueless American's Guide to the Champions League Final, 2024 edition. But first, like FIFA, I gotta pay some bills. Hey guys, you're number one fed agent and summer is almost here, bitches. Which means it's time to get rid of that big back. Oh, big back, big back. And what's gonna help turn this fat Asian to the skinny Asian is factor meal plans. F cooking, f going to the grocery store, and especially fuck that $37 Chipotle order on Uber Eats. You know that ain't the move. Miss me with all of that because I have been subscribed to Factor for over a year now and I'm never going back. And listen, I know you can't pry yourself away from Hell Divers 2, so you don't have time to cook anyway. But do you really want that nasty order of Mickey D's delivered to your door? Ugh. Brother, ugh. What's that? What's that, brother? But with Factor, you get fresh, never frozen, delicious, restaurant quality meals delivered right to your door. And whenever you're feeling a bit peckish, you just pop a few holes in that bitch, microwave for two minutes, and you're eating. And you're eating good. And with 35 different selections and 60 add ons every week, you'll never get bored. And even if you want to add a little fancy pants to your life, you can try out Gourmet Plus. Get a little surf and turf, or get my personal favorite, the filet mignon. For less, then a meal at Chick-fil-A, you could be eating filet mignon. You deserve filet mignon. You deserve to at least try out one box of Factor and see if it doesn't just make your life a little bit more efficient and nutritious. And I'm gonna help you out. As you head over to factor75.com right now and you use the code FATASIAN50 at checkout, you'll get 50% off your first box as well as 20% off your following box. Click on the link down below. Once again, that is factor75.com. Use the code FATASIAN50 at checkout to get 50% off your first box and 20% off the following. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this video. Now, back to the show. So first, let's talk about the feel-good story of this tournament, Borussia Dortmund versus PSG. Now, one of the oddities of the Champions League is it doesn't matter how you're doing in the regular season because you got into this competition based on how you did last year. Juxtapose that to how American sports do it, where you have to do well in the regular season to get into the playoffs. If that was the way it was in Champions League, Dortmund wouldn't even be here because they are having one of the worst seasons in the Bundesliga in over a decade. So naturally, they're doing incredible in the Champions League. They topped their group above PSG, actually. Vance easily passed around a 16 to beat the Dark Souls boss of this competition, Atletico Madrid, in stunning comeback fashion to make it here, the semifinals. Their fandom is extremely beloved in the football world. Look at them. Look at this. They are a sight to behold. Often considered one of the best fan bases in the world, and they have long been every football hipster's favorite team. And shortly before the semifinal went down, Marco Royce, a longtime servant in the club, announced that he'll be leaving Borussia Dortmund at the end of the season. This is the fairy tale team in the Champions League this year. PSG, on the other hand, are the complete antithesis. They are one of the most hated clubs in the world because they were a nothing club till the Qataris bought them up and went on a spending spree, buying up the likes of Mbappe, Neymar, and even Messi for a couple years. Of course, the likes of Messi and Neymar have moved on because they're just chasing the dollar. And now all they're left with is Mbappe, who's announced that he's leaving at the end of the season and probably taking most of the fans with them because the PSG fans, they're about as plastic as their credit cards. And their continued failure in the Champions League has been a great source of joy in the footy sphere. Now the Parisians got to the semifinal by earning it. And by earning it, I mean earning enough money to pay off the refs. Yes, it was a robbery in broad daylight in the last leg with every conceivable call going against Barcelona. But I don't want to get sued, so I'm going to say all these are allegations. But I can't say this. The best team did not advance. No, no, the refs made sure about that. But this is Mbappe's last year there before PSG become a B-list club again. So fuck it. The Qataris are gonna Qatari, and they money bullied Barcelona's broke ass out of the club. So yeah, you can kind of guess 
who everyone was rooting for on this. First leg was in Dortmund, and behind the yellow wall, BVB would strike first. And it was immaculate Route 1 football. Now this goal might look quite simple to the naked eye, but it was multi-layers of perfection. The timing of the run is impeccable, allowing the 31-year-old Fulgrim to clear his man and get in on net. The ball over the top hits him perfectly in stride, and the German international sticks out his tongue like Jordan, and his first touch should be placed in the Louvre as it just sets him up immaculately to run onto it and deliver a kill shot. A goal made from the highest caliber of German precision. Yes, I don't want to say it, but I'm going to say it. This was white excellence. And then something strange happened. It's hard to explain, but it was as if the football gods themselves descended upon the pitch to dispense their own form of justice. These gods, they knew, like Miles Morales in the wrong timeline, that PSG were not meant to be here and they would not allow them to pass any further. As time, and time again in this game, PSG would find themselves in prime scoring chances. And time and time again, they would hit the woodwork. Mbappe shapes the ball into the far corner. It hits the inside of the post and somehow defies physics and bounces out a molecule to the inside. And that's going in, but it's not over. It falls to Hakimi, who cuts a shot off the ground and it hits the inside of the post again and bounces harmlessly out. Later in the game, Marquinhos delivers a perfect cross. Fabian times his run in between two defenders. He's a yard and a half away from the net. Nobody's touching him, and he somehow heads the ball wide. For my Americans, this is the equivalent of an NBA player missing a layup. It's a horrible miscue, and Dortmund are let off the hook again. Osman Dembele, the hero of the previous leg, had opportunity after opportunity to score in this one, but apparently his contract with the devil only allowed him to score against Barca, as over these two legs, he went right back to being shit. PSG completely dominated the first leg, nearing 65% of possession to Dortmund's 35. Chances were bountiful, but the football gods went Gandalf and said, you shall not pass. And that's how the first leg ended. 1-0 to the crowds, heading back to Paris. And in the French capital, the oil money curse would continue. If anything, it was worse. PSG created chance after chance after chance, but seemingly every time a PSG player shot the ball, yes, you guessed it, it would hit the woodwork. In fact, I don't think the PSG players did a crossbar challenge that they could hit the frame of the goal this consistently. And in the 50th minute, One Piece superfan Julian Brandt finds Matt Hummels unmarked at the back post off a corner and the Dortmund defender harvests the second goal for the heavy underdogs. And from that point on, the Holy Ghost of football played keeper for Dortmund. PSG just kept on doing the crossbar challenge until the time ran out. And unbelievably, somehow, someway, the worst Borussia Dortmund team in years, a team that has sold off world-class players like Jude Bellingham and Erling Holland over the past two seasons have found their way back to the Champions League final for the first time in 11 years. And you could see how much it means to the Dortmund players, some of them collapsing onto the pitch in tears, and everyone, everyone in the football world who isn't from France was happy for them. And what's crazy is that if they win the Champions League final, they will earn themselves a $20 million bonus. And if they lose the final, they will earn themselves a $25 million bonus because if Jude Bellingham helps Real Madrid win the Champions League, they had agreed to pay Dortmund $25 million. Now on the other side, PSG are obviously devastated. And let's all take a moment to laugh at them. Yes, hilarious. Oh, oh, not smiling anymore, Osman Dembele, are you? This is brilliant. Thank you, football gods. Thank you. Thank you so much for dispensing your justice as it gives us great joy to see a disappointed Mbappe exiting the European stage for the final time wearing that Parisian blue. And he will soon follow LeBron's footsteps and leave his hometown team to take his talents to perhaps the team that I'm going to talk about next. Yeah, let's talk about Real Madrid and Bayern Munich. For those uninitiated, there's just something magical about Real Madrid and the Champions League. This competition is their birthright. They have double the amount of Champions League wins than their nearest competitor. When I say that they're the Naruto of this competition, I'm not trying to be cute. Oh no. It's the only logical way to explain the level of bullshit plot armor this team has in this competition. Because it doesn't matter if you're the better team, or have better tactics, or even have the lead. In fact, you'd be mere minutes from beating them. But then, Don Carlo raises his eyebrow, casts friendship no jitsu, and in the blink of an eye, they somehow stolen the lead back. They did it two years ago to Man City in the semis. On their way to their 14th European title, they just booted out the defending champions of the last round where they were heavy underdogs. And with all of this mystique, they arrived in this year's semifinals with all the confidence of a tall white guy in a Patagonia puffer. Just unstoppable. Standing in their path though, might just be the only evil mastermind on the planet with the formula to take them down. Enter Thomas Tuchel, one of the greatest tactical minds in modern football, arguably the preeminent football strategist alive right now. But 
While his managerial style has made him one of the best in the world, it does have one glaring flaw, and that is, he's a giant asshole and pisses off damn near everyone he works with. His tactics often involve mixing and matching his lineups week to week to specifically counter his opponents. While this is fine in Football Manager, in real life, players are human beings with real emotions and egos, and yanking them in and out of the lineup every other week can make them feel unsettled and often frustrated, which has resulted in Bayern Munich's worst run in the Bundesliga in over a decade. It was so poor, in fact, that about two-thirds into the season, Thomas Huckel and Bayern Munich had agreed to mutually part ways at the end of the year. But that constant adaptation has worked brilliantly when it comes to tournament play. This is where Tuchel thrives, and he has the blueprint for this very situation. Back in 2021, he had a shit season in the Premier League with Chelsea, but then they put on a defensive masterclass on their way to one of the more improbable Champions League wins ever. And who did Tuchel beat in the semis that year? Yeah. An arguably stronger Real Madrid team than he faces now. If anyone could find a chink in the plot armor that is Real Madrid, it was Tuchel. And so with the stage set, the first leg would begin in Munich, and Bayern set up well, they played well, and they had the better chances early on. They just couldn't convert, and as Real Madrid do, Carlo Ancelotti raised his eyebrow, giving Tony Cruz the signal, and the German international threads a ball that completely unlocks Bayern's defense. It is an absolute dot. Vinny Jr. cooks Kim like a bulgogi bowl and slots it past Neuer. And just like that, it's a 1-0 lead out of nothing. It must be so frustrating playing these guys. And that scoreline stays until the 51st minute, when Leroy Sané makes up for a rusty first half by cutting inside onto his left, and he scores his first goal for Bayern Munich in six months. And what a fucking goal it is. The power he puts behind the shot, my God. He pounds this ball about as hard as Israel is pounding Palestine right now. Just obliterates it. A supersonic screamer that poor Lunin had no chance to get to, even with it being at his near post. And the crowds weren't done shortly after Bayern's wonder boy, Jamal Musiala, saunters into the box. Hits Lucas Vackett with the hezzy and gets him to nibble. It's not much contact, but Jamal goes down and the ref points to the spot. Harry Kane steps up, and it's Steph Curry from the spot. Automatic, the top scorer in Europe this year, and a contender for Ballon d'Or, and a, let's face it, a weak year for the award. But I digress. Bayern now have a 2-1 lead, and it's playing right into Thomas Huckel's plans. Bayern switch up their tactics to kill the game off, as they'll gladly nurse a one-goal lead all the way to Emily in the final. But Real Madrid are never out of it in this competition until the final whistle blows. And as sure as the sky is blue, in the 82nd minute, Rodrigo, who always seems to come up clutch in big moments for Real, wins a penalty. Vinny Jr. steps up and sends the great Manuel Neuer the wrong way to grab his brace. And that is how the first leg ends. 2-2, with everything to play for, heading back to España. The second leg at the Santiago Bernabeu started like two heavyweights feeling each other out, playing a little footsie, finding their distance. But then, in the 12th minute, Vinny Jr. catches Barn asleep, sneaks in mere yards away from net, and does his best Mbappe impression as the shot hits the inside of the post and careens off, but right into the path of Rodrigo, who puts it on target. But the big frame of Manuel Noir parries it up and into the safety of his calm big paws. A replay would reveal that he actually got a fingertip to the initial Vinny shot, making it a fantastic double save for the German legend. And from that point on, both teams opened it up and started throwing haymakers. End-to-end -end stuff, chances were flashing in front of both goals. Manuel Noir had a number of highlight reel saves, easily having a man of the match performance. And it would stay nil-nil until the 67th minute, when a ball is played up on the left wing and Alfonso Davies cuts inside and delivers a firecracker into the far post. It is the first goal he has ever scored in the Champions League. And this is exactly what Thomas Tuchel wants. It's how he slayed Real Madrid in 2021, get a one goal lead and defensively smother the game to death. But that Real Madrid black magic, it's strong. And in the 71st minute, a corner routine pinballs off a of Bayern defender and sneaks underneath Neuer. The Bernabeu erupts. Bayern and Tuchel are fierce as Joshua Kimmich is down in the box holding his face. And we soon see why a VAR check reveals that Nacho Fernandez puts hands on Kimmy, who, in my opinion, goes down kind of lightly. And let's be honest here, the refs have always been very friendly to Real Madrid throughout the history of this competition, so I was thinking this goal is definitely going to stand. But the head ref takes one look at the monitor and waves it away. No goal. Bayern's one goal lead stands. And time is taken away in the 80th minute. Don Carlo decides to make a switch, taking off the often clutch Rodrigo to bring on Joselu, who the last time I saw him play was a complete waste of space 
at Stoke City, an English team so shitty that they aren't even in the Premier League anymore. It was a flabbergasting decision at the time. The clock ticks down to the 87th minute when a Bayern player goes down with cramp and has to go off of the pitch to receive treatment. Then, with only two minutes left in regulation, Vinny Jr. just decides to have a pop from outside of the box. But it's right at Manuel Nor. It takes a bounce, and as Nora goes to collect, it inexplicably bounces off of his collarbone and drops right in front of him. But Jose Lu had gambled and pounced on his reward, and the 34-year-old Stoke City flop has equalized for Real Madrid in the 88th minute. Main character plot armor activated. They somehow did it again. And from what? A mistake from the greatest goalkeeper of this generation. A catch that he makes 99 out of 100 times. But he takes his eye off the ball for a second and lets Real Madrid black magic possess him. And somehow, once again, they've equalized. And they weren't done yet. Three minutes later, another corner routine finds Ruger on the left wing with some space. He delivers a low cross into the box and it's Jose Lu again to score, but it's immediately blown dead for offsides. But the replay reveals that he might actually have been onsides. They go to the VAR check, and the head ref puts his finger on his earpiece, pauses, and then signals. The goal stands, and the Santiago Bernabeu collectively comes. I don't know how they keep on getting away with this. What should only happen at the end of a sports movie is somehow routine for Real Madrid in the Champions League. It is unbelievably believable for the Spanish Wizards. But they aren't in the final yet as the board goes up and reveals a chonky nine minutes of injury time. Bayern pour everything forward. This is it for them. They've already lost the Bundesliga. Thomas Tuchel is leaving. Oh, poor Harry Cage. A generational player who has never won a major trophy in his life. This is his last chance to get something this season. So they all just fucking send it. And in the 13th minute of a nine minute period of injury time, they're rewarded. A long ball up, gets deflected. Thomas Muller knocks it down to the path of Delict, who slots it home. But the celebrations are once again cut short. The play was blown dead even before Muller touched the ball. Apparently the Lions judge had raised his flag immediately upon the deflection, which you should never do in the age of R. And even with him raising the flag, it's only a recommendation. The head judge can let the play carry on and check it afterwards. But instead, he makes an extraordinary choice to blow the play dead immediately a near criminal call since far could have easily checked it and upon replay the Bayern player in question was on sides the goal should have stood but since the head ref blew it dead so early they couldn't go back and review it so real madrid's lead stands tuchel and the whole Bayern bench understandably go fucking ballistic and what's the most crazy thing about this mistake was that it was done by one of the best referee crews in the world. This is the same team that just repped the Champions League final last year and is also the same team who repped the World Cup final in 2022. This shouldn't happen. For a ref team of this level to fuck up this badly can only be explained with Real Madrid plot armor. And nothing can be done. To the head ref's credit, he lets them play on an additional six minutes past the nine minutes of injury time, but the Germans' fates were sealed. The final whistle blows. And it's Real Madrid's world, and we're all just living in it. An all-time finish to the semifinals in the Champions League, but just another Wednesday for the 14 and soon-to-be 15-time champions of Europe. And that is how we got Borussia Dortmund and Real Madrid facing off at historic Wembley on June 1st. In Europe's Super Bowl, we have the Cinderella story of the tournament, Borussia Dortmund, that if they win, it would be a fairy tale send-off to fan favorite Marco Royce and a gift one of the best fan bases in the world, but far more likely they will get fucked by Real Madrid voodoo and a fan base that has been spoiled with success for as long as I can remember. So that's what you get to tune in for. Anyway, that's going to be it from me. Very quickly before I go, I want to say that I'm looking to add an editor to my team. So if you are interested, hit me up on Instagram at the Fat Asian Official or hit me up on my email, which I'll leave in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks to Lean for helping me edit this video. Thank you to all my patrons keeping alive and well, helping make these videos possible, especially Elm from the GOAT tier. You are the defense of Bernardo Silva of my heart. And yeah, I'll be back soon. Next video up, the story of Bayern Leverkusen. Until then, stay thick, boys.